Welcome to Decades of Horror, the 1980s. Satan, we are making a pact with you. Take Madame Ricard. She makes us suffer. We don't want her. Take her far away and don't ever let her return. This is episode 237, recorded July 12th, 2023. Gruesome Magazine. Oh, God. Oh, Chad. Oh, Chad. Oh, Chad. Oh, Chad. <laughs> It's what I do. What's funny is that's what I felt like doing too. I'm like, ah. yeah, so sad. This is gone. Uh, my name is Jeff Moore, and this podcast is about horror films released between 1980 and 1989. Each episode, my co hosts, Bill Mulligan, Crystal Cleveland, and Chad Hunt, and I will tackle another classic or not so classic film from this radical, gory, influential, and gruesome decade. And for the not so classic ones, take a look at our May releases. Uh, mm. Anyway, uh, <laughs> he's right. Mm-hmm. Join me today. They were not all nasty. Crystal <laughs> Cleveland, the Living Dead Girl, and co-host of the Gruesome Magazine podcast. How you doing, Crystal? I am great. I am doing very wonderful. I am realizing how quickly the year is going by. Before you yeah, know it, no kidding. Yeah. Oh, you know, it's almost August. What the frick? We are we are coming up on uh, finishing up our fourth year of doing this together. Is that like insane? What? what? Of doing eighties? Yeah. Wait, the no, no. The four of us. Yeah. Time flies. What? We started with uh, episode one forty five. So, or I need to start I taking more Jared tall. And we're up to two thirty seven now. Yeah. Welcome so to we my world. A, we do about twenty five a year. So. Four, four wow. years. Yeah. Isn't that crazy? <laughs> yes. Yes, it's crazy. It's a runaway train going toward a destination we don't I'm like, want. oh my God. That's why Bill was asking. He was trying to pick his next movie, and he's like going, did we do uh, Ms. 45 yet? Yeah. Yes. We did that. Like, And I look, and it's like three years ago. No wonder he doesn't remember. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Oh, my God. That's All so... Right. W- anyway. Guys, that, that's crazy. Like, it explains why we kind of just... just I'm, we're comfortable with one another. So, you know, like, oh, I hope yeah. so. I yeah. hope also so. explains why we end up yeah. doing direct like the Loch Ness horror and things. You know, <laughs> what's that sound? Oh, that's the scraping on the bottom of the barrel. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, no. Yes. I that's still just... love it, but he's not wrong. Mm. Okay. <laughs> you got stuff in the dollar store, you got stuff in Neiman oh. Marcus. You got to do them all. Yeah. yeah. Uh, all right. Yeah. Uh-huh. Oh, man. All right. Also with us is Chad Hunt, comic book artist and co-host of Decades of Horror, the classic era, and the 70s. How you doing, Chad? I'm still trying to wrap my head around four years. That's how I'm doing. Wow. I know. I know. It's a shock. I shouldn't have but said But you know what? I can't I can't imagine doing it with any other people but except Me too. you guys. Aww. Me oh, that's too, fun. Chad. I look forward to it. Oh, forward yeah. To it. Um, and last but not least is Bill Mulligan, writer, director, and special effects guru, and co-host of Decades of War of the 1970s. How are you, Bill? I'm doing okay. Summer is more than half over for me, and I've got two big family events coming up. Uh, Immediately after after this show, I'm hopping in the car and driving upstate, and uh, got a wedding this weekend. You're going on a cruise, right? Uh, that's going to be at the very end of the month, and then mm-hmm. the beginning of August, school starts up again. Uh, yeah. Yeah. You're, not, you're not one of those guys that drives all night, are you? Oh, yeah. Oh, I love uh, driving at night. That, that way I get to drive through right. D.C. <laughs> not during the day. Oh, okay. And that's, okay. that's Is it better at night? Do. Well, there's less people, and that seems to be the biggest problem with D.C. It's probably so better at did, night, too. Didn't you tell me Shauna watches all the mm-hmm. true crime stuff? I mean, you don't want to go to those truck stops in the dark. At, you know, <laughs> in the middle of the night. Thanks, thanks for bringing it up, but uh, <laughs> you're right, yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, hey, Gruesome Magazine, Decades of Horror, partnering with Play Now Media on several other channels. Currently, Decades of Horror, the 1980s, is on Wicked Horror TV. And I believe as we uh, we put all the new ones up and then I'm working backwards, put the old ones up. Currently, I think we have like uh, episodes 200 up to 235 are up. 
he has been putting them all up at the beginning of a month. So whenever we release this month, we'll go up uh, beginning of August. So anyway, check those out. Plus, they got a lot of great movies. Stuff yes. you don't see everywhere. Uh, this podcast, we start by giving some basic details of the film we're going to cover, followed by our first impressions uh, that we take off kind of down the road, wherever we may go. Um, and spoiler alert, again, once again, you know, we're in the 80s. So today's movie is, uh, what, 36, almost 40 years old, depending on what date you use. Uh, so we're going to spoil the heck out of that bugger. Oh, yeah. Uh, so the yeah. <clears throat> day's movie, and this is a departure. I'm not sure. Have we ever done, we've done, uh, a lot of Italian. We've done British. Can't remember if we've done any, mm. oh, we did some, did we do some French? Can't remember. We oui. have to think about it. We, oui, we, oui. we, oui, we, oui. uh, Japanese. We've done some Japanese. Bill sure. needs a bathroom uh, break. Yeah, but so. here we go. Oh, Australian. We've done Australian. So anyway, oh, uh, today is from Mexico. I don't think we've done a Mexican film yet. Uh, Poison for the Fairies, released in 1986, written and directed by Carlos Enrique Tabuada. And if you pay attention on the classic era, you will recognize his name. We've done two of his films, hmm. uh, The Book of Stone and Even the Wind is Afraid. And Even the Wind is Afraid is almost kind of a partner one with this. It's hmm. also about schoolgirls. Uh, the cast is Anna Patricia Rojo, Elsa Maria Gutierrez, and Carmen Stein. Production company, oh, Lordy, Instituto, Instituto Mexicano. Mexicano de Cinematografía, Sindicado de Trabajadores de la wow. Protección Cinematográfica. Yeah. Like they, seriously, they, with that long name, They just keep adding though? syllables, don't they? Like, <laughs> wow! How many, how many yeah. words with more than three syllables can we put? And featuring Smiley cast. the Cast. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 Uh, filmed <laughs> in Mexico. Surprise, surprise! In uh, Mexico City and in the state of I don't know how to say that. Tlaxa. Uh, Tlaxcala. Uh, yeah. sure. Yes, that's uh, great. Which is just I think just east of Mexico <laughs> City. Uh, it was released on October 2nd, 1986. Oh, this is what uh, it's Veneno. Veneno para los hadas. Okay. And that's the original title, which I think literally translates to Poison for the Fairies. And the synopsis, a 10-year-old girl convinces a lonely classmate that she is a witch, forcing the child to become her assistant. Though their games are initially rather naive, they gradually take a nasty and violent turn. That's being nice. Yeah. That's fairly true. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, um, how do I want to do this? I guess I'll go first. It's my pick. Yeah. Uh, and I've kind of already uh, spilled the beans here a little bit. So we'll, we're doing first impressions now. And yeah, I picked this because uh, Whitney Cayazzo. Uh, former classic era group crew had picked a couple of his movies. And uh, when I saw these come out, these were ones that we talked about as this is, this is one that we talked about as being really well known of his. And at the time it wasn't available. So when these showed up on shutter, I wanted to uh, take a look. And when I keep saying plural, there's two other of his movies on shutter from the seventies. Uh, but this is not for everybody, I will say, but I'm also going to say I think it's an excellent movie, and it's really well written. If you go through this, this is one of those movies, you know, I didn't check everything, but almost everything contributes to the plot and knowing what's going on later on uh, as the one girl, um, Veronica, starts to, uh, is manipulating Flavia. Um, so... Um, it's, and, and then it's, it's just interesting how Flavia gets to the, to the point where she believes that she's a witch, mm -hmm. uh, and they come from different social backgrounds or different familial backgrounds. Um, and we'll talk about that a little bit later, but I think that the two little girls did really well, um, do an excellent job. 
and it's I'll leave that for somebody else to uh, bring up or mention, but there are some interesting things about the way this, this movie is shot, et cetera. So uh, I think I'll stop there and just uh, move on to uh, whoever's next. Bill, how about you? What are your um, well, first impressions so of this? First time I saw this film was just a couple of days ago, and I literally was completely 100% unaware that this existed. Which is relatively rare. It's it's unusual for uh, for something from the seventies or eighties to just completely like oh okay. I mean, I mean, there's films that I haven't been able to see or I've avoided or for whatever reason, but this one I haven't seen because I wouldn't have even known to ask for it. Mm -hmm. So wow, that that's that's pretty cool. And I'm watching it, and yeah, this is a slow burn. This is more of a character study. The horror is um, understated and all, but I think it's. If you're if you're willing to pay attention, this is not one of those movies you watch while you're doing something else because you got to read the subtitles, and there's not a whole lot of action going on to you know take you away from whatever your other activity is. Um, it's good. It's it's really well made. It's it's well acted. The children are excellent actors, especially the young woman who plays Flavia, who if you see the pictures, you would immediately think, oh, she's the evil one. She's mm -hmm. got the widow's peak and she's got the dark hair and a very expressive face, but no, no. And I think this is, this would be a good film if you're, you know, if you're some kid stuck in a, some God awful um, movie class in college and you got to write essays and things. Yeah. Oops. Pick this one. Cause there's a lot, there's a lot you can sink your teeth into here. It's, oh, there it's is. interesting. There is. And it's interesting. I mean, you know, whether you agree with what the, what the film's saying or not, it, it's here. You have these two characters who come from different socioeconomic backgrounds. And yet the real difference, the real thing that works against both of them is, um, you know, Flavia's family is pretty well off and not at all religious. So she's, you know, she's kind of grown up without any of this supernatural belief system. Uh, Veronica, on the other hand, comes from a poorer background. They're not living in absolute poverty. She's still going to a private school, but but she's she's under the influence of her her grandmother and the maid who are super superstitious. So she is living in this extremely, you know, want of a better word, religious worldview, and it screws up both of them because you know she she I think really believes that she's a witch. A a after a while, you know, I mean, at first it might just be something to impress people, but I think even she comes to actually believe her own BS, and. Flavia, because she's been raised not to even regard any of that. You know, there's an old saying, if you don't believe in God, you'll believe in anything. I don't know if that's necessarily true, but it does leave a void that people will fill. And some of the most secular people I know are the most gullible when it comes to the healing power of crystals or whatever. Please don't write letters if you believe in that. So it's fine. <laughs> whatever. Knock yourself out. I've got some amethyst. I'll sell you cheap. Um, you know, it's it's interesting, and she's so she is so ripe for the slaughter that this little girl comes along and is talking about crazy stuff, and she doesn't know how to deal with it, and she very quickly falls under her spell, literally or figuratively. That's really interesting. It's some good stuff there, and and mm -hmm. so it's a, but it's an odd little film because part of it is kind of a a warm coming of age, you know that's a weird age for kids and everything when they're starting to become the people they'll become. And then there's also some real nastiness and there's that ending is a real gut punch. It is. You know, when you, the, the more you think about it, I mean, this is not a happy ending um, at all. There's, I, I don't know where it goes from here. And, and when the film's over, I just found myself thinking what happens after this? Right. Right. Nothing. Yeah. nothing it was all an accident mm. yeah yeah no probably. it was an accident that girl's a bad girl oh yeah she's bad don't get me wrong listen listen i work <laughs> with children um you can't judge children the way you judge an adult if an adult acted like a 10 year old kid they would be a sociopath you know yeah. they you would, could not trust them because kids kids have a different way of looking at the world their brains are still developing they're nuts um but yeah, she does seem like a pretty big kid. Uh, yeah. Um, okay. But, Next, Bill, and uh, you were done. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, uh, enough for me. Crystal, what about you? About first impressions? I like your, like okay. your pumpkin there, your jackal. Mm -hmm. Oh, thank you. 
Well, see, yeah, it's like Mickey Mouse actually, pumpkin. It's yeah. never too yeah. late for or See, too I early for Halloween. Oh, oh, look at that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm embarrassed. I'm a child. No, um, you're not. <laughs> candy corn hoodie. <laughs> <laughs> so this movie revolves. It's okay. It's it's a it's a high quality movie. Shockingly, really high quality, especially for some stuff made in America and Canada in the '80s. Okay. Mm. Um, this movie revolves around the children, and it's basically a psychopath. She's horrible. I don't think she believes anything about her being a witch. I think she wants to because the nanny keeps tell feeding her these stories, and she's using it to gain leverage and power over this mm -hmm. other girl. Because she immediately noticed the other girl and noticed that the other girl had money. She even talks about it, about how she you know, lives in a wealthier home. And I, she wants to be a part of that. Mm -hmm. So she uses everything that she can to make this girl believe that she's actually a witch. I mean, I thought it was very clever of her to do the, the having her grandmother in there while she hid in the closet mm -hmm. and making the girl believe that. I think that was actually really clever of her. Um, mm -hmm. She... She, of course, the acting is phenomenal. But what's interesting about it is this psychopath manages to create a psychopath in her destruction. So I was mm -hmm. super happy at the end, actually. Like, <laughs> oh, wow. I, I loved it. I was like, thank God. Like, that girl was never, she, she, she didn't really deserve to exist. Some people are just bad. They're just bad people people and she is a bad person and now she's not leroy bring so, me them shoes yeah <laughs> like you know it, it's just she and she just kept getting worse and the fact that she would manipulate the situation by telling the other girl to stay quiet about everything but when mm -hmm. she chose to give facts about things to make the other girl look bad no problem yeah. she, just oh, yeah. just the worst kind of person so I, when she asked for the dog, I was like, kill her, yeah. kill her. I was, I was like, I was hoping. Let me tell you what. I was like this, bah, bah, you know, like, mm -mm, mm -mm. yeah, that's, uh, that's, mm. I want hippie. F you. And then she <laughs> wow. got what she deserved in the end. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. it was, it's, it, I mean, they say that fire is not a bad death. They say that it's actually like it burns Who your nerves. Who says that? Oh, wow. That, no, no, that's what, if it's like hot enough, like like as far as feeling it, like the pain is gone. You tell know, that to your, a burn I will victim tell you, survivor. Well, <laughs> no, I, oh God, yeah, that's, but I will tell well, you that. Surviving is that a different I, thing, right? Well, it yeah, surviving great. is different. It felt great. <laughs> Most of them forget though, because I had, mm. I, I had a friend who got burned third degree, but he didn't mm. remember any of it. But, oh, okay, let me tell you, I uh, do wood burnings. And let me tell you, I accidentally touched the tip of it, right? And I didn't feel anything, but I had a big divot <laughs> where my skin was just burned. Okay. Like a big divot, and it was just burned. I felt nothing You missed nothing the part where the wood burning belongs back. on the wood, not on, the, yeah. on your body. Yeah. The flesh, that was right just, there. well, you know, the tip I grabbed too far down, like trying to do okay. something. Yeah. Well, I touched a, a hair curler once, and I cried like a damn baby. That's not as hot. It's not as hot. It has to be well, really oh, hot. I'm, like, oh, okay. I'm not even going to tell you what I did. I, it's too embarrassing. Uh, all right. So you enjoyed it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I enjoyed it. I don't think it's for everyone. Yeah, I don't I, yeah. I, I, I. don't think I... Uh, I definitely don't think this is for everyone. A lot of people can find this for 10-year-old girls. Yeah. Don't. If yeah. you're a big slasher, it's not a... You're, you're not going to get it. Yeah. There's a, there's a little bit of blood, but... It's not not much anyway. Mm -mm. All right. Yeah. Thanks, yeah, Crystal. Daniel. <laughs> Chad. What, what about talking you? About again? <laughs> <laughs> We're poisoning uh, the fairies. <laughs> this is, I've never heard of this either. I never knew any of his movies existed. You know, until uh, we've been covering them. Um, but I watched this one. I felt I agree with what everybody else is saying. It's a very well done, well made movie. Uh, the two girls were just amazing in their parts. Um, 
is this movie is very much about bullying and manipulation, um, that kind of thing. And mm-hmm. the girl, and at first I, I felt like, what am I watching? The live action version of a Charlie Brown cartoon? Because none of the adults' right. faces were showing, you know, exactly. they weren't showing any adults. And, the, and then they were speaking Spanish, which I don't understand. So it did sound like, wark, 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 wark. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, but uh, which was interesting and it kept me interested because I was like, what's the deal behind that? And it gave it sort of a fairy tale quality uh, by going in that direction. Where And the only pers- people that were where you got to see their face was the grandmother and then the dead teacher. You know, you, you got to see their face right. as far as I re- recall. Right. But um, yeah, great film um didn't see the end coming at all at all and and what a great satisfying ending to it um i was just like i was like crystal i was like uh this girl needs to get pushed off a cliff yeah, or, okay. or <laughs> you know set on fire well she you did get set on rough. fire yeah. uh, <laughs> but i just hated her i just hate yep. i hated i hated her character and um, so, yeah, I felt very satisfied at the end and very, uh, very happy that she got what she deserved. And I'm I'm like, yeah, I would have been standing there smiling with my dog, too, <laughs> yeah, at the end. Me too. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, very is a it's a beautiful movie, I think, and very, very interesting film, I think, too. So that's all I have to say about that. <laughs> <laughs> yes. All righty. All righty. So. uh and now's the time when we do no taglines. There's no taglines. There's no taglines. What? So we got to go through this whole rigmarole anyway. There are no taglines. Yeah. I was I was going to send an email for you guys to uh, make up our own taglines, but I but I didn't. Oh. I I forgot. It got away from me. So, and that's been. <laughs> Shut up. What an no. actual hell. Ooh, oh, got theremin right. now. Yeah, Chad. yeah. Theremin. we got oh, it came from outer space music. So yeah. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Oh, yeah, okay. you should get a theremin. That would be that would be so I, awesome. I want one. You know, I you personally can think that's it's, the best episode I've ever done. Yeah. <laughs> you know the cool what, thing about theremins, that? Crystal? It was invented what? to be an instrument that anyone can play, and that's true. Yeah. Anyone can play it, but it turns out you have to be an absolute genius to play it well. To, to play it to well, not make, yeah. yeah. To not make it sound like you're looking for an AM station or something, you know. It's yeah. Yeah. There's this woman so, on YouTube that plays yes. it. Sorry, I know, and she know, does Clara, and like Clara Rockman or something. Oh, she's a, she's a genius. Yeah. yeah. Clara Pell. Yeah, she is. Where's the beef lady? Yeah, where's she's a genius on the family. Oh. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> sorry. So before Jeff. we go any farther, just to <laughs> point out what this is, they Mexico has its own uh, version of the Academy Awards, and yes, it's a much a uh, smaller country, but still, uh, called the Audiel Awards. And this film had five wins and five huh. additional nominations. So it won, they give out the golden Audiel for uh, Lifetime Achievement, but also Best Picture of the Year. So this got the golden Audiel for Best Picture. Uh, the director got it for Best Direction, hmm. I think. Best original story and best screenplay. Okay, and, I can see uh, that. And then uh, and the girls see, got else? nominated for best actress. Impressive. I yeah. would hope so. Uh, Lupe Garcia got it for best cinematography, and uh, Mejor Edición got it for best editing. Or no, I'm sorry, <clears throat> Mejor Edición. That's what that means. Best editing. Carlos Savage got it for best editing. Um, and then, yeah, the girls, uh, both girls were nominated for uh, Best Actress. Um, there was another one. Oh, Best Set Design also for Enrique Ramirez. So hmm. I thought, oh, and Best Score, one for Best Score, hmm. uh, Carlos Jimenez hmm. Mabarak. So. That's why I'm surprised I've never heard about this. This is critically acclaimed. It's really mm-hmm. good. Mm-hmm. I just, I don't know, maybe it wasn't easily available for a while. It I've wasn't. I've never heard of this. Literally, when we did uh, "Even the Wind Is Afraid," it we found an article that suggested you watch these other movies of his, 
And I looked for them, and none of them, I couldn't even find them on YouTube. You know, hmm. the, you can find them on, uh, but then uh, I forget who put it out now. I think maybe, oh, it's Vinegar Syndrome put out a Blu ray with these three movies on it. Two from, and I'm sorry, but I forget the titles of the two from the 70s. But anyway, uh, yeah. And so, and I believe this is the last film he directed. Oh, wow. Um, Did he die or something? Uh, no, he lived a little while longer, but he just did other stuff. He really did. He didn't direct uh, yeah. that many movies. I think like 18 or 20, something like that. But he's got a 85 credits as a writer. Uh, let's see. Darker <clears> Than <throat> Night was one of the ones in uh, the 70s. Yeah, 19 as director, 85 as writer. Mm. So well, He had a good career. Th- well, mm-hmm. and I'm thinking... I'm going to feel bad now. Now I'm taking time to do this. I should have looked it up first. He's the writer for uh, some Santos movies, too. Oh, all right. El Santos. Mm-hmm. So yeah, everybody gets in on the act, you know, with those. I think they just had fun. So, all righty. Uh, so, yeah, I wanted to get that out there before we went any farther. Just that this was highly acclaimed. Hmm. Yeah, I could see that. It's It's quality film Mm -hmm. well it's interesting because right now all of a sudden and maybe it's just because i've you know basically Mm -hmm. whitney exposed me and chad and you know our listeners to a bunch of this stuff more and more of this stuff is coming out on blu-ray now there's you know there's been several a couple of different box sets of uh el santo and blue demon or whoever you know which on Blu-ray, which didn't exist before on Blu-ray, they were just really well, crappy versions. Well, get ready to see more because one of the things I've uh, heard is that they think this strike, this writer strike, is going to oh, go yeah. on and on and on. And one oh. of the things that the streamers are doing is they're going to the vaults now yeah. and looking for some foreign stuff that they could bring in. You know, well, that, that, that I mean, us. that'd be good. Uh, somebody yeah. else put out a box set called mm-hmm. Mexican Macabre. That's got hmm. four well-known Mexican movies that weren't available on Blu-ray before. One of which is uh, what is the one we did, the Brainiac. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, wow! Uh, yeah. But but also the uh, Ship of Monsters. Uh, no, Legend. The other three are we did we did do Ship of Monsters. We we did Ship of Monsters, but uh, the Legend of uh, the Weeping Woman. You know. Oh, La Llorona. Oh, yeah. La Llorona. So. I can't uh, roll my there's eyes. There's a, a pretty well-known one from the early 60s that I had always been trying to find and could never mm. find it that was even watchable. So that's those are out on Blu-ray now, and I forget what the other ones were. Anyway, um, so yeah, let's let's take a look at this. So here was the uh, the original poster, I assume, mm. Mexican poster, which is kind of nice. It's a very cool poster. Yeah, because very in, cool. in a way, they are... It's sort of a mm-hmm. doppelganger type thing with these two girls, right? You know, they're yeah. don't you miss blonde, cool one's... posters? Mm-hmm. Yeah, actual art. I really do. That's why I like the uh, the new Indiana Jones poster a lot. It, yeah, it's a, it's a painted poster. Somebody, an artist, had to make it. It wasn't just. But that's only because we expect head. that from an Indiana Jones. Every other movie yeah. that comes out is just you know teal and amber. And mm-hmm. you got Morgan Freeman in the corner, even though he's not in the movie. I mean, they all look <laughs> exactly the same. Freeman. Yeah, <laughs> what? Yeah, really. Yes. I, yes. I am not in this movie. Yeah. <clears throat> but this I is a nice poster. For a yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah, he didn't die till 1997, and he was only 67 mm. when he died. Oh, so when he made this movie, 50, 55 or so. Mm. It had a very... 70s feel to it it did um, it didn't seem like it was it, an 80s movie. you know it kind of did it kind of did didn't have that um, 80s slickness but that's good mm-hmm. that's all to the better the uh and then here's uh another poster bill came up with and i'm Ooh. not sure nice. it doesn't make sense with it but i like that it mm-hmm. plays into the fairy tale part of it right you know like that's cool it, it yes. leads you in the wrong direction of what that film actually is. Has so, the feel like of the, the others. Okay. Yeah. The it makes Nicole it look Kidman, like Kidman film? Yeah. Well, yeah, the original one uh, from 1972. Oh, oh yeah. So, oh, we got to do that um, Because I didn't think the others came out till like the 90s or something. Mm. With this Nicole. This must have been a reissue. Yeah. 
Yeah, no, there yeah, was no. a there was another one. Um, there was a book by, believe it or not, Tom Tryon, the actor, that was a bestseller back in the. Mm -hmm. I think it came out around 1970, but I'm just no. I think that sounds about right. Top of my head. Creepy ass. Well, movie. there's a tagline I missed. Darn. Huh? <laughs> All right. So that's that's it because there's not you know when you search no. this stuff you get the same thing over and over and over again um just pictures of the kids but that's really what the whole movie is so yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. the uh so let's take a look at uh this is uh flavia played by you know a, look at that shot that's a great shot it is a great shot Played by Elsa Maria Gutierrez. She's awesome. Fantastic job. Yes, she was. <laughs> that middle that picture weird. sort of prefaced the end. Yeah. It's so With cool. The, yeah. the witch the on witch. the wall. <clears throat> well, there's there's a lot of stuff that pre remember the part where there's a scene where she asks her dad. And so just to, to reiterate what, what uh, Chad was saying everything is shot from the children's viewpoint. Mm -hmm. So all you ever see are the parents, like, or the adults from the waist down or their back if, while they're sitting in a chair, as you said, except for the, uh, the piano teacher mm -hmm. and the, and the grandma slash, I don't know if he's a witch or not, mm -hmm. but there's a scene where, uh, after I think her and the, the old lady from uh, black Sabbath were <laughs> related somehow. Was it, it Black was, Sabbath uh, with the yeah. creepy old lady? Right. Yeah, yeah it is. Yeah. It is. Um, <laughs> after after Veronica fills her full of one of her witch stories, then Flavia goes home and asks her dad about witches. And, ah, no, there aren't such things as witches. And, uh, well, how do you, you know, something about how do you kill them or something like yeah. that? And he says, yeah. well, you burn them. But that was what, you know, the crazy people oh, yeah. did back in those days. That's You don't do that anymore. And then it cuts to her looking at the fireplace, seeing these logs burning, mm -hmm. you know, and I'm thinking, wow, there's some mm -hmm. foreshadowing, I guess. Uh, uh, but yeah, she was... I, I love that she gets her dog. Oh, that made me happy. Mm -hmm. Sweet. Uh, baby. And this <laughs> is then uh, Anna Patricia Rojo as Veronica, the evil She's girl. Wonderful. I just now love that shot of her sticking her tongue out at the cross. At the cross, yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah, yes, exactly. Yes. She's going by that. What's this doing out here? Oh, they said the devil used to appear here, so they put this yeah. cross to keep him away, and she sticks her tongue out at it. But, you know, she, I still, I do I do disagree with Crystal. I really do think she ended up believing her stuff. Maybe not at first, but when, when they put the curse on the woman and she dies, I think a little spark went in, off in her head. Yeah. And the thing is, I see this Fair enough. with people. I, can give you that. I see this with people, and, and if you want entertainment, go on YouTube and look up Tai Chi master meets actual mar mixed martial arts. These, <laughs> these guys, what I is it? Yeah. Okay. So these people who have schools where they teach like no touch Kung Fu, where he just waves his hand and taps someone on the head and they go flying across the room. And of course, everyone's in on it. The master is doing this and of his course. students are reacting and everything, but there comes a point where at some point these guys actually think they've got these powers. They should know better, oh, but they no. don't. For so many years, their students have been going along with it that they believe it. And then this MMA guy shows up and, and challenges them. I'll give you, if 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 I if you can beat me, I'll pay you $5,000. And the master is like, this is going to be easy. I'm just going to wave my hands and go flippity yeah. flappity flu and he's gone. And the, the mixed martial art guy punches him repeatedly in the face, which has never happened in the last 10 years. It's Makes the funniest stuff you'll ever see. It's so great. <laughs> It's, I should so wish somebody would do is, that to Steven Seagal. Okay, yeah, this yeah. is the funniest thing, guys. Like, like for this girl getting burned, who is a true psychopath, Bill's like, oh, just gut punch, just depressing. And then I'm... yet for this poor, delusional, probably older person who what? just wants to believe that they can be stronger than what they are, they get pulverized and Bill thinks it's hilarious, okay, which listen, I not... find really funny. <laughs> My personal morality I'm code is a complicated on one. It's it's it, no, yeah, no, I, yeah. I can't. I can't defend based on many different things. Yeah. yeah, yeah. No, I get it. Like it just 
that poor dude. You know, he. he I, knows I feel like a ten-year-old girl is redeemable. You know, but but once no. you, once you, are you when you're serious? seventy years old. Okay. Oh well. You know, you you may think that, but let me tell you, as someone <laughs> oh, who has been around enough people with mental yeah. illness and and this, there, there are people that cannot be redeemed. Yeah. They, she gave they me bad seed vibes from the very beginning. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, she and that's, is a, that's true. true. Absolute that's psychopath. True. That's true. Yeah. Yep, I did you can mending a bad seed. So yeah, that that's true. So, the scene in the middle there, where she's holding that candle. That so the movie. I love this opening scene. The movie opens up. It's beautiful. And we get a black and white scene of her mm. uh, walking up the stairs with a candle, and walking into. Mm her mother's bedroom and the mother sits up says what are you doing here and then it turns out the little girl has a knife in her hand and reaches up cuts her throat blood pours out makes a pool of oh and the blood is red it's like a tingler right mm -hmm. it's a black and white scene but the blood is bright red pours it's out like over paint. the floor yeah thick like paint and then the camera zooms in on this blood red and that becomes the the, the binding of a of a storybook that I think the grant somebody's reading to Veronica yeah. and you're going um, and I'm sitting mm -hmm. there thinking so Veronica is hearing this story and she pictures herself as the one who yeah. cuts the cuts her mother's throat mm -hmm. that she's identifying with that person that yep anyway I, I thought that no was a great bueno. opening yeah. scene and that segue from the it immediately the tells you the... what you're dealing with yeah yeah, yeah. like um <clears throat> there was a, there's a lot of scenes like that that are just i thought amazingly uh well written and 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 look their outfits are so cute look at that pink yeah. outfit yeah. that's that's cute come on that's precious Mm -hmm. I, I just I think the costuming, the wardrobe was really on point. The little dresses that the girls wore, I was like, "That's so cute." Sorry, well, you know, when, that's when, that's such a girl thing to say, but I was like, "That well, looks fabulous." <laughs> when when so Flavia shows Look up, like she's new in the school, right? And she's wearing that. I think that's when she goes to school the first day at the top picture. Yeah, and she it's goes a in pirate and shirt. The staff and the teacher, <laughs> who I think should know better. <sighs> tells Flavia or tells uh, Veronica to sit next to her and help her. Yeah. Out. And I'm like, you pick the sociopath in the class that, mm -hmm. that nobody else will associate with for good reason. Cause they call her a liar, you know? So, you, want to see and that, you know, that happened to me when I was, uh, <laughs> we moved uh -oh. to a town when I was in fifth grade. And so I started the school after, after school started. My first day at school was after school started. And this one kid comes up to me and like befriends me. Right. Hmm. And I'm like, oh, this is uh -oh. guy. This guy is really yeah. friendly. Well, it turned it out, you he's know. He's a warlock. After a couple of days, <laughs> you just <laughs> learn he's the weirdest kid in the class and he has no right. friends, you know. So yeah. well, um, uh, I, it isn't I mean, it was very nice of him to do, but it's it's uh. Interesting, I think. Uh, you were you were a good guy for befriending him, Jeff. That's or did right. you did toss you him befriend to the him? Side? Or did you yeah, I was about to say, did I, you? Well, did you? I don't think Look. I tossed him to the side, but I didn't befriend him either. Oh. He was a kid in the class. But I mm -hmm. I did have a friend in the class like that. Mm. So anyway. Mm -hmm. Okay, enough enough about that. Um Yeah. These kids are great. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> you might be watching this podcast. <laughs> so I had to, oh, I pulled these pictures up kind of at the last minute. So these are, these are full screen uh, mm. folks, but <laughs> this is, uh, this is maybe partly why <clears throat> Flavia is a little. Jeff, there's somebody good. standing in the window behind you nice. yeah. eating his book. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> there's her grandmother. That's, <laughs> Bri That's Brian Cox in a wig. I am what I am. <laughs> and this is the woman that she imagines herself. Veronica imagines herself after she hears that story, aging and getting older and older. And you see this. And the final, the, her final shot is, is this. Um, that's what she is imagining herself. And she tells, 
she tells Flavia that I'm going to become a, uh, ugly old witch. You know, I am, I really am an ugly old witch, really. Mm. Um, it's crazy stuff. And then who, who brought it up? This whole thing where she decoys, mm. uh, she tells, she tells, uh, Veronica Christine. tells Flavia oh, yeah. that she's a witch. And she goes, well, prove it to me. She goes, okay, well, come on. And then she runs upstairs ahead of her and hides in a closet or another room or something. Flavia follows her into the room and yep. <laughs> yeah, her yeah, yeah. And that, it, that would, okay, admittedly, go, that would be wow. terrifying. Yeah, if I was that, that age and I walked Terrifying, that, yeah, yes. I'm, First of all, I'm urinating Oof. wherever I'm standing. <laughs> Exactly. Yes. Yes. I, and I forget. Yep. I forget where this is. Is that what she's? Uh, That's a she nightmare. A, yeah, that was yeah. a nightmare. But still, you know. Hopefully, was, it's at a nail salon. Yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah. No joke. Those are something for sure. Woof. So yeah, there bugles. are some interesting Sticking bugles on the end of your fingers. Images here. So. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you did that too. <laughs> yeah. Ew, like corn chips. Yeah. I wonder what those toes look like. Okay, I'm done. No, I'm done. Uh, mm -mm. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> why does... <laughs> I got a whole... What are you doing, Chad? Oh. He's laughing huh? at me. Was, you froze like at, this. He froze, yeah. laughing at Crystal. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> It'll be cute. Mm. Uh, cool. So there's a whole series of things that, that uh, Veronica does that makes... Flavia thinks she's a witch. I think yes. maybe the first one is she predi she predicts that the teacher is leaving. Yes. She says, Miss Ellis is leaving. The owl told me, and the owl picked me because I'm a witch to tell me. And, and then they find out later that she's leaving. Um, that thing about the father burning witches. Uh, she goes to, Ver uh, yeah, Flavia goes to Veronica and says, my dad says there are no witches. And that's when we have the, yes, sir, are, I'm a horrible old witch you want to see. Mm -hmm. um, and then there's the piano teacher thing mm -hmm. where she's talking about doing curses. Um, and how avant, or nonchalant she goes, I didn't, I just wanted her to go away. I didn't want to kill her. Yeah, yeah. that's what you asked for. Yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, and she asked, uh, Veronica asked her, I don't know if it was her grandma or her her, uh, her uh, mm. nana or whatever she calls her. The uh, She asked her two things, I think. One is, uh, how do you make a pact with the devil? Oh, that's the, yeah, the nanny. Yeah, the nanny, I'm yeah. like. No, the nanny is the one telling her all the stories. Yeah, the that's, nanny is bad for her, really. That's ultimately. an interesting thing for a little girl to be thinking about how do you mm -hmm. make a pact with the devil uh first you need some cinnamon yeah. <laughs> that sounds yeah good. go out to the crossroads um yeah so i there was just so much of that in there that led flavia to believe that she really was a witch that it just she could see her getting more and more frantic her nightmares got worse and worse and and then she comes yeah and then and then she manipulates her completely because she wants her to go to the cemetery to get the dirt but she yes. said no no i won't do it i won't do it and then she manipulates her by saying i saw the teacher i saw the teacher mm. she came to me she she wants revenge mm. that poor it's it's like she just planted that seed and then the girl yeah. you know it's just very sad yeah i forget what does she say to uh because then they have that whole thing where she scares the little girl with the snake in the box and yeah. then tells the teacher that uh, she tells her that Flavia, Flavia put it in there. It. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Evil. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Evil. Yes. And, and as far as she's concerned, it's totally justified because if they would have caught her, she would have been expelled. Yeah. So it's okay to get. Yep. So she goes and collects all this stuff. This all these things she that her nanny told her you needed to make a potion uh, poison for fairies because fairies kill witches, so they want to hurt us. So after they get to the farm, they go on this big trek all over the farm, picking up 
spiders and toads and lizards and crosses and dirt from a cemetery and I forget if that was all of it or how much more there was. Uh, but in the meantime, she does the fatal thing that Crystal brought up. She coerces yep. Flavia into, and I forget what it is. You have to give me that dog or I will. I Well, she she says the witches are going to come take her eyes out. Her eyes. Oh, and that's then right. Later, right. And then she says her tongue. Yeah. 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 <clears throat> witches will come take out your eyes and your tongue. All witches mm-hmm. need black cats. And she goes, I don't have a, didn't she say something like, I don't have a cat. I'll have your dog then. Yes. Mm-hmm. Or yes. something like that. That's exactly right. Yeah. Um, yeah. So. Oh, that was a mistake. You know, you got to know when to fold them. Yeah. So this was like, the dog was the final, the straw. Yep. Put the yeah. Back. yeah. And I don't know. We, we say we do spoilers. So I'm going to go ahead here. They, they have the, they find this, uh, uh, Flavia shows her this barn and it's a, it's not a really big barn, but it's got a loft and there's, it's all full of straw and a ladder to climb up there. So nice greasy this, flammable straw. Yeah. They get this, they get this, uh, copper basin, and carry it up and, uh, put all the things they've collected in it. And Veronica's up there stirring it. And when Flavia looks up there, this is what she sees. Mm-hmm. Because her, was it the nanny that told her before, have you ever looked into a witch's pot? There's all kinds of nasty crap in there. Yeah, yeah. Tails, eyeballs, swamp dirt or something, she said. Cemetery dirt. And so that's probably a manifestation of what she was told, yeah. Well, this is, this is, uh, Flavia is, is, I mean. Right. And this is what Veronica's told her. I'm really yeah, an yeah. ugly old witch. So. Yeah, we're assuming this is all in her mind, her mm-hmm. imagination playing tricks on her. But hey, you know, maybe this is a straight horror movie and she really, really is about an old witch who pretends to be a little kid. Well, it's it's described as a supernatural horror film. Yeah. So, you know. It you is. Know. Oh, all maybe it, th- maybe end. she is. Well, then she's not a very good witch. No. Well, <laughs> no. And if she, she could tell the future, she should have never have known she was going to get burned to death in a bar. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, if you're a witch, you should never go into a barn full of straw and candles. Just yeah. throwing that out there for any witches who might be listening. Yeah. It's like a dad. Well, it's the only thing that'll kill them. So can, yeah, candles aren't in- great things to use for light in barns full of straw anyway. So no. old yeah, dried wood no and joke. stuff. So this this is uh Flavia actually takes a candle, lights the straw, pulls the ladder down, yes. hugs her dog to her and and Goes out the door and locks it. latches the door behind latches. her. Mm. <laughs> and we end up with this. Da, yes. da, da. That sweet little dog. With a long yeah. scene of Veronica going, help me, Flavia. Help me, please. Por favor. So. Uh, burn, maybe you should burn, conjure burn. up a fire extinguisher or something. Yep. I, you, should, I, you know turn into your familiar oh wait you don't have one oops uh-huh. loser loser <laughs> so i pulled a couple of these up just for cinematography i thought that was Pretty. a cool shot yeah it is. that's when she finds a lizard up in the top of that old church uh flavia man i envy it. people who live in places that have really cool sets just lying around like this right. i look outside I my house and it's just a bunch of trees yeah, the cemetery was pretty cool too. Yeah, everything looks cool in these countries. Um, and then this shot of the uh, hmm. the stuffed owl and they're looking down on him. I don't know why that's. Uh, I just think that's like visually that's a cool shot. Um, and just just to show what this guy's style. So uh, even the wind is afraid has this as an opening scene mm, yeah it's beautiful nice. he plays a lot with shadows it's not yeah, yeah. yeah. It's cool. so in a girl's school you know that's a really well composed shot right there Oof. yeah it gives me goosebumps looking at that so yeah, yeah. um yeah he's, he's definitely got some style so i don't know i was just really impressed with all the stuff they put together into this story too 
convince her. Um, mm -hmm. The different families. Yeah. No, it's it's a good film. Look, it's not what I recommend you get together with your buddies with some pizza and beer to watch. You know, maybe you want something with a yeah. few more car crashes or uh, you know zombies beheading. But if you're if you like, yeah, if you're into film and and good stories and everything, yeah, definitely, definitely yeah. worth a look. Yeah. It's so a thanks good film to sit this. around and watch on your own when, right? You know, if, if, mm -hmm. if everything's quiet around the house and you just want a good movie that's got a little bit of a supernatural bent to it, maybe you just watched a Hollywood movie two hours of CGI and yeah, just like, uh, <laughs> yeah. there you go. Well, it reminds me a little bit of watching a silent film. You know, you really got to focus mm -hmm. on the the visuals, and you're going to have to read the subtitles unless you know Spanish. Uh, mm -hmm. So, um. Anyway, uh, so so much nice little mm -hmm. twists in the story. Okay, any final comments on this? Uh, great film. Yeah, yeah, it is a great film. I mean, it, it's up to the quality of his other films that we we've covered on classic era, if not better, if not more so. I yeah, and I can't remember. I, even the wind is afraid. I think. Did we watch that on YouTube or archive.org or something? YouTube. I think I watched it on YouTube. Yeah. Yeah. YouTube has a pretty good copy of it. Pretty good. Uh, copy. The, the other ones on uh, Shudder are one is something about dark, darker than the night. I'm, I'm like. Darker than the night. And the other one is a, uh, a name. He's got some very arty titles for his film. Mm -hmm. Yeah. A Darker Than Night is the it was one from 1975. And then another one called Rapina. R-A-P-I-N-A. -A. Those are also on Shudder. If you are so inclined. Or Santo in Anonymous Death Threat. You could go that way too. Anonymous Death Threat. <laughs> <laughs> oh. So, all right. I don't know. And we don't have much feedback today. So, Oh, no. Um, this must be getting into the May movies then. Well, it's, <laughs> it's, also, uh, uh -oh. it's also summer. You know, it's, yes, summertime. Got Ugh, just, do. I don't understand, though. It feels like summer should have just started, and it's actually almost over. It's almost over. Uh, it's ridiculous. But, so, you know, summers used to be three months long, and they're not anymore because school starts in August. And then it doesn't end, like, for some, like Bill, until freaking way late. It's ridiculous. Boo. Can't wait for retirement. Well, we have one <laughs> feedback, and I'll, I'll uh, leave this for – I'm going to give this to uh, – well, who picked Monkey Shines? That was Crystal. Crystal can read this one. No. Was it me? Did I pick Monkey Shines? I thought Doc I really picked pick it. I mean, no. No. I get out. Oh. Crystal? Well, I I think I picked it based on the poster. <laughs> I'm saying well, Doc like this is the You stage. liked it when you were a kid, but it's yeah. Yeah. yeah no, it's, like it's a totally like different this. flick. That's right. Now yeah. though. That's right. Oh, and it's Chad. Chad, Chad White. White. Chad it Chad, thank you so much for supporting us all the time. Yes, like, sir. You <laughs> always leave comments and like and that helps so much i just want to say that and point that out now okay <clears throat> chad white i really want <laughs> oh my god i really wanted a pet monkey when i was younger i did too until i realized how dangerous they were and i begged and hounded my parents for one then i watched this movie and i changed my mind <laughs> great show everyone exactly like i thought i used to think oh my god how cool must it be to have a monkey until you realize how strong and deadly they can be dodged a bullet there size. dude my cousins yeah. actually got one of those mail order monkeys and it's a horrible what? story i will not share here oh yes they used to sell them in the back of comic books well, yeah they did they you mean you. Well, okay wait bill you have to did they actually send a monkey yes, yes. Did they actually... you got a cardboard box with a few holes punched in it and there's two scenarios one you open it up and there's a dead monkey that's about <laughs> half the time the other one is worse you open it up and a monkey swimming in its own feces terrified jumps at you grabs you by the face and starts biting and scratching and stuff's juicy in your mouth and there's nothing in between 
and uh yeah it's it was a horrible horrible thing to do and it's completely illegal now yeah you can't do that now but yeah i remember the back in back in the day yeah if you want a more entertaining version of this story look up on youtube gilbert godfrey talking about mail order monkeys and uh he had some guests on who had actually gone through this it's the most funny appalling thing well you used to be able to do a lot of that stuff you get mail order uh turtles crocodiles i think i I had a mail order (laughs) turtle i think yeah, I had the turtles. That's how alligators got into the New York City. Store. That's exactly how it happened. Are I've you seen serious? The documentary alligator. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yep. Oh my god! I gotta watch that. Yeah. I gotta write this down right now. <laughs> that sounds crazy. Okay, technically they were actual caimans, but uh, right. the alligators, right. crocodiles, completely inappropriate for children. Well, yeah, but awful. You know, there's too many laws on the books now, but there are a few that I 100% approve of. And everything that's stopping people from ordering monkeys, turtles, and alligators through the mail is definitely at the top of the list. You can order chickens through the mail. Yeah, you can. You can still order chickens. But it's not, they're they're usually, there's usually like no dead ones. I don't know what they do. But they well, you can ship stuff so quickly little, but too but now. like a, like a like a crate of little chicks, right? Yeah, right. Mm-hmm. yeah, part yeah. of the chicks. Sea monkeys were okay, but they didn't look anything like they did, you know, like they were supposed to. So it's fine. You needed those a are just magnifying glass, yeah, to yeah, see right? them. But yeah, yeah, sea monkeys. And they're like, aren't they like crazy? Because they're like freeze dried. Yeah, yeah just and throw them they in the water actually and they come back to life. Yeah, that's yeah. so crazy. That's so cool. I think. I, I wanted some. sea monkeys. I, I wanted them. Kid, and I was so disappointed that they didn't oh, yeah. have the little I mean, bow ties and, <laughs> and <laughs> so, bouffant hairdos like they did in the comic books. So Thanks. apparently yeah. my mom. Yeah, the ads. My, the ads are great. My <laughs> mom had, ar- she had already been through this or whatever. And she's like, no, it's it's trash. They're brine shrimp. And I was like, well, I don't care. Imagine. Look at them. She's like, I don't think you understand, Crystal. Stop being so stupid. They're these little itty bitty little shrimp, and they do they don't look like this. And I was like, no, no, look what it looks like. Like I mm-hmm. serious. I was like, stop being so cheap is what I kept thinking. She must have. I guess she must have ordered it for my. I would laugh at you, but something. I was the kid who ordered the little ventriloquist thing that you're supposed to put in your mouth and make it sound like you're throwing your voice. So I'm walking oh, around yeah. the house like, "Help, let me out!" You know, <laughs> thinking that it's doesn't supposed to be coming out of the room. No, no, it doesn't work at all. Oh, okay. Imagine stupid X-ray glasses. <laughs> yes, imagine oh, my God. disappointment when my Bad X-ray glasses geez. came. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh my God. Okay. Well, uh, we were yeah. idiots. But at least we never, like, you know, got burned alive for being evil uh, little sociopaths. Yeah, true that. We are just going to spread never asked Satanism them. around I, school. You no know, joke. And, look, I want your dog. Okay. Yeah. Now, I want you to tell me you're never, ever going to try to take the dog away from... I mean, this woman is... I mean, this girl. Mm-hmm. See, it's like, in my brain, it's hard just to see as a girl. Is Looney Tunes. She's, yeah. Ugh, yuck. She definitely mm-hmm. has the uh, the uh, manipulation stuff down. Yeah, yeah. Um, while we're well, chatting here, I thought I would. She doesn't really have any caretakers. She has the nanny. No. Her grandmother is basically. I don't even know. I don't know what her grandmother is like. Kind of man, get the woman an eye patch for Pete's sake. Yeah. <laughs> well, she's still uh, uh, she's still acting, Anna. Patricia mm-hmm. Patricia Rojo is uh, still acting. And she was born in 74, so she was like 12 when this movie came out. I, I saw a copyright 1984, so I don't know if it was shot uh, then or what. But They were both very good. I mean, mm-hmm. they had to carry the movie, so they were both very good actors, I thought. Mm-hmm. She made me hate her. I know that. So that's good. Yeah, acting. That's right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And this was not her first either. Did quite a few things before this. Um, and then the other, uh, the other girl, Elsa Maria Gutierrez, as Flavia, I don't think she did not go on to do anything else. This is her only credit. Wow. Weird. The, the wow, brunette. Yeah. It's yeah. interesting. She was really She's good on too. the run for arson. 
Well, she could be doing <laughs> stage work. I don't know. You know, she to change her name. Totally. Said I don't like this stuff. I ain't doing it. Yeah. 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 Um, that's too bad. But understandable. So, that's it for this episode, folks. But in two weeks, we'll be focusing on another movie released between 1980 and 1989. This one is chosen by Bill. Hold on. Hold on. Uh-oh. What? Bill chose this? Mm-hmm. All right. You're not allowed to ever make fun of any of my choices from here on out. Really? This I haven't is... seen this movie. Jeff, you have Jeff? a good movie. No. This... Jeff thinks it's great, so I don't know. Jeff what thinks a lot of things are great that aren't great. Uh, you do it's, raise an interesting point. It's fun. <laughs> Let's put it that way. I think it's fun. So, what is it, Bill? What are we doing? What is it? Well, we're going to go from a sensitive coming of age story about little teenage, little teeny tiny witches to uh, carnivorous cockroaches. It's the nest. Ooh. Carnivorous yes, whose, cockroaches. Whose poster shows a giant That's... cockroach mounting a <clears throat> scantily clad woman Ew. yes it's very tasteful Ew. very tasteful yeah <laughs> it's that's the main reason i've never seen it i looked at that like yeah. i had the same oh, reaction i looked at that and thought i gotta see this. uh see <laughs> here we go <laughs> everything's um, gotta sorry. be mounting something or yeah. well i mean <laughs> okay so uh sitting on i, I could have said that I, I i it's it's obviously drawn to uh, imply certain things, even though sometimes it's better to be a fool and keep your mouth shut than open your mouth. Oh, well, <laughs> I've, I've never, obviously, I've never gone by that. Exactly. Uh, the uh, this is on the nest is currently on Tubi as we record. Of course, it so is. If anybody wants to check it out, I might have a Blu ray. <laughs> of course, you anyway, do. Uh... <laughs> See for cockroaches. You know, uh, I don't know. Oh, much, and it but stars Robert Lansing. Things. It stars Robert oh, yeah. Lansing. So we've already done one Robert Lansing movie. The uh, oh, what was the one we did? Chad, yeah, the Ant Empire of the Ants. Empire of the Ants. Was it Empire or Phase Four? Phase Five? Uh, no, no, what? something of the ants. No, the one where they're on the with Joan Collins. The, yes. Yeah. yeah, Empire of the Ants. Empire of the Ants. Yeah. Yeah. We did that here on eighties. No, on seventies. On seventies. Oh, okay, I was gonna say I was like that does not I. That doesn't sound familiar. Or you it's, could have watched them in twelve o'clock high in the sixties. Oh. The nest is a is a oh, is a just a pure eighties, sure flick. You know, yeah. All right. Well, I I'm think done. carnivorous Gross cockroaches. Let's just say, yeah. It did name. not win. It did not win the Mexican version of the Academy Awards. Let's no, put it that way. It did not. It did not. Um, For your consideration. All right, folks. <laughs> I forgot to take out a one-page spread in the New York Times. Nah, they should have, yeah. With the with the roach <clears throat> mounting the scantily clad woman. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Vincent Canby gives it three stars. I, I, <laughs> well, you'll just have to wait. You look up the poster yourself or wait till next yeah. episode. Um, oh, I'm sure half of our listeners at least know, uh, know this movie. Typing away right now. Yeah. Like, oh, you had to right. get mounted. Mm -hmm. What do you mean by mounted? Uh, yeah. You get mounted right. more. So please make comments. I mean, go mount yourself. We something tonight that, that irritated somebody. Um, yeah. well, oh, I'm sure. So you can you can send feedback to feedback at gruesomemagazine .com, or you can leave comments on the Gruesome Magazine YouTube channel. Uh, we do have a Facebook group as well. Uh, Gruesome Magazines H N R and D O H podcast facebook group it's got a long name but jump in there and check us out folks are always posting stuff there um anyway we love getting feedback a little slim this week but okay we do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. for sure these let's go guys we gotta start doing better movies <laughs> yeah. Oh, this is a, yeah the nest the nest we that will prompt some comments yeah that'll bring them in <laughs> that'll bring them in all right catch us again here in two weeks for another great horror movie the 1980s is only decades of horror can do it say good night everybody good night everybody, good night, everybody. by realm and good night <laughs> oh yeah get some oh, yes. summer reading wow. material well, I forgot oh yeah oh yes yeah. totally and published author You're sitting at the beach you want to have a book in front of your <laughs> and a cat there you go rom yes for it by name having books on uh <laughs> On uh, having, okay, having y'all uh, got that round book. 
Ram. Yeah. Ram. All you, ha- like, I having found books with just... demons on the front is a great conversation starter for. Oh yeah, it person. is. Yeah, it is. And well, if you just go to away Amazon from you. and put in Bill's name, it'll there pop you go. right up. Pop That's right up. Yeah, about. all my books mm-hmm. will pop right up. Okay, so tell me, oh. tell, me when I, tell me when you're done, guys. <laughs> oh, oh, we're done. Sorry. We're done. Sorry, right. Thanks, Jeff. Poor Jeff. Bye-bye. I'm sorry, Jeff. Bye. <laughs> Sub-Magazine.